Hi there. Welcome to this masterclass. My name is Peter Shankman. I'm the guy who founded Help a Reporter Out, or Harrow, the site that fundamentally changed how people and businesses get media attention. I'm focused on helping you get more press. Today, I'm going to show you the five things you need to master in order to get more media for your business and boost your revenue. Now, I'm guessing, since you're here, this isn't your first webinar. The first thing I want to mention is that if you have failed at getting media for your business in the past, it's not your fault. Look, there's a lot of information out there, and it can be really confusing. It's very easy to be misled, and the information overload can hold you back and keep you from achieving the success you're craving. That's okay. If you're like so many entrepreneurs I know, you've tried to get media attention in the past, and for some reason, it just didn't work. If you're feeling like this is your reality, one without the media attention you know your business needs to reach the next level, I want you to put those fears to rest. You can do this. You just need a system and the right person to explain it to you. Look, big faceless PR agencies, they want you to think the only way to get press for your business is to hire them and spend a lot of money to do it. Well, they obviously have their reasons for wanting you to think that. It's in their best interest for you to feel like that you can't get your own media coverage. Their business is dependent on that. So if you've ever felt like the best secrets for getting PR are intentionally kept under wraps, you're probably right. Big agencies simply do not benefit from you succeeding on your own. They want you to have to hire them. The difference with me is that I care about your success. I care that you get your own media coverage. I don't run a public relations firm anymore. I have it for over 10 years. In fact, that's why I created Help a Reporter Out. Harrow was designed to empower people to get their own media coverage, and how it changed the face of the PR industry by making it easier than ever for reporters and sources to connect. But it's more than just using Harrow. There's a strategy involved with getting media coverage, and that is what we're here for today. I know that you're longing to finally have the business you dream of, and I want to show you how using a strategy to get your media coverage can help you do that. My goal for this webinar is to help two types of entrepreneurs. Those who are either solopreneurs or have a very small team and know getting media coverage will help them grow their business but can't quite figure out how to do it, and those are who are in charge of getting media coverage for their boss or their company. So whether you're working on getting your own coverage for your company or you're an employee in charge of getting coverage, in the next hour, you'll learn a simple system for getting more results. So my name is Peter Shankman. I started Help a Reporter Out. But before that, I ran a public relations agency for several years. Before that, I was a consultant. And before that, I was one of the founders of the newsroom at America Online back in the 90s when AOL was the internet. One thing I learned over all those jobs and throughout everything I've done is that media attention can help you. In fact, the very first thing I did when I went out on my own to try and raise money to start my PR firm I came up with the idea for a t-shirt, a funny t-shirt that I sold in Times Square. And I made a bunch of money selling it in Times Square. But I came home and leaked that story to a reporter I knew at USA Today. Then I proceeded to sell 10,000 shirts on the web in two months. I cleared $100,000 off of one well-placed article in USA Today. That's the kind of press I'm talking about. I created this system that I'm going to share with you today because... When I spent, after I sold Harrow, I spent all this time talking to people, figuring out what I wanted to do next, and everyone said to me that how grateful they were I founded Harrow, how grateful they were that they use it every day, and why is it still so hard to get media attention? Harrow made it a lot easier, but it's hard to find journalists, it's hard to pitch without Harrow, and I also spent a lot of time reviewing pitches that I'd seen over the past several years, both running Harrow and beyond. You know what I learned? The majority of pitches people send to the media, well, they kind of suck, okay? I created this system because I don't need you to be awesome at public relations. That's not your full-time job. I don't need you to have to spend hours and hours learning to rewrite the world and, and pitching every journalist and figuring out what they do. I don't need you to do any of that. I need you to be a little bit better than what journalists are used to getting. I need you, essentially, to not suck. Journalists are doing 10 times more with 5 times less. Because of that, 99% of the pitches they get, even if they're just slightly off topic, a reporter is deleting them faster than, well, faster than you know what. So I wanted to build this system to give you the tools to send a press release to a journalist, 
to send a pitch to a journalist that's going to get read and going to turn into content. That is my goal here. With that, I want to share the top five ways that I've learned to help you get media attention. So let's start. So the first thing you simply need to do to start getting better media coverage from your business is this. You have to know your goal. Too many people jump into public relations, they pitch a reporter every second they have, they're sure that if they just get that, that one pitch, that one hit, that one great story, that's all they're going to need. Until they do or they don't, and then things pass, time passes, and it's time to do another one. So you have to have a goal. You have to have a plan. Why are you pitching the media? Is it to grow your brand? Is it to sell more product? Is it to become an authority in your industry? Is it to get bigger than your competitors? Is it to expand into new markets? Is it to continue growing domestically? To grow internationally? There are so many questions you have to answer before you start pitching the media. The media is an outlet to which you are going, but if you don't know why you're going there, you're simply going to bounce around the walls and not make any forward progress. You have to understand why you're doing that. So before you send out that next pitch, before you come up with that next new idea to start sending to those reporters, sit down, understand your goal, come up with it, edit it, refine it. It's a goal that can change every month, every quarter, every year. It doesn't matter. But your goal has to be secure and you have to never lose sight of it. Without knowing your goal, without truly understanding what your goal is and why you're pitching the media, you won't be able to create your media plan. If you can't recreate your media plan, you're going to be shouting at the wind. I hate shouting at the wind. There's nothing worse than shouting at the wind, wondering, praying, hoping that someone has heard you. So take a minute and ask yourself, or your bosses, or your executive team, what is the goal of obtaining media look like? What is that end result? What would make you the happiest? What would make your company the happiest? What would give you that end result that you're looking for? If it's to sell more product, how many products? If it's to grow your brand, what do you consider growth? If it's to get bigger than competitors, how much bigger? What is your goal? Write it down. Understand that it will change. Come back to it when you need to. Your goal is mandatory. I cannot stress enough how many people fail at public relations because they go in without knowing their goal. Know your goal. Write it down. Edit it. Have other people look at it before you start to pitch media. The second tip I want you to learn is understanding how to own your positioning. What do I mean by that? Too many people go in to pitch a reporter and when they finally do get that call back or that email response that says, yes, I'm interested, tell me more, they freeze. And they freeze really, really badly. There's nothing worse than blowing your chance because you weren't prepared. In fact, blowing your chance because you weren't prepared is so much worse than not getting a chance at all. Because if you blow your chance and you're not prepared, no reporter is ever going to give you the time of day again. So I ask you this question. Can you define you, your company, your product, and or your message in 10 words or less, underwater, with a gun to your head. The reason I ask that is because you have to be able, on demand, on cue, without wasting a second and without missing a beat, when you have the opportunity, explain in no uncertain terms, 100% accurately and perfectly, what you or your company does to whoever asks the question. If you cannot do that, if you cannot do that upside down in a tub of water, if you cannot do that on demand, under pressure, if you cannot do that to any journalist at any given time, you're not ready to pitch a reporter yet. Let's understand what that means. You have reporters who are doing 10 times more with 5 times less. Reporters today have zero time. I threw an event a couple of weeks ago. I invited four reporters. I had to ask them to clear that day on their schedule six months in advance. Reporters have never had more to do and are getting paid less to do it with less tools to do it than ever before. So can you tell that story perfectly? The one time you get face to face with that reporter who you've been pitching and pitching and pitching and they finally say, you know what, 
I'm going to be in your neck of the woods tomorrow. I'll stop by. I'll come by your office or come by my office or tell me over the phone. Can you nail your positioning perfectly specifically to that reporter in 30 seconds or less? In other words, not only what makes you different and why should the media listen to you versus any of your competitors and can you explain why you're better, but can you do that specifically related to the reporter to whom you're talking to? In other words, if you're talking to a reporter who covers your company or you from a tech angle, explaining to them what you do is an entirely different ballgame than if that same reporter covered consumer or if that same reporter covered finance. Your goal is to be able to tell your story perfectly the first time within 30 seconds to the reporter you're talking to specifically based on what they cover or what their idea of their story is. That requires a lot of homework and that requires making sure that you have done not only that homework but that you have practiced it and you are ready to go. That is not easy to do. It's very doable once you learn how to do it, but it's not easy to do. Every reporter is different. Every reporter covers different things. Can you make sure that you own your story based on the reporter you're talking to at the time you're talking to them based on what they cover? So now we're at point three. Point three is creating your key call point. What do I mean by that? Let me ask you a question. What is the one thing you do for which you want to be known by the media? Here's the thing. That's a trick question because the media that covers business is entirely different than the media that covers finance or the media that covers tech or the media that covers widgets. What do I mean? Let's assume that you are a company that makes widgets. Well, is the one thing you want to know that your company makes great widgets and then you want people to know that? Great. Who do you want to know that? The financial reporter doesn't really care per se if you make great widgets. They want to know what your numbers are. The customer reporter, the the consumer reporter wants to know that you make great widgets. They might also want to know that your customer service is up to speed. The tech company wants to know about the tech you use in the widgets and why is it different than everyone else's. <laughs> My point is, no matter who you're talking to, no matter what reporter you're talking to, each reporter, each producer, each person you're trying to get attention and media from is coming from a different page. Your key call point has to be different for every single reporter you talk to. Now, some of them are not going to be massively different, but some of them are. Some of them are going to be ridiculously different because the finance reporter is going to be entirely different than the customer consumer reporter, while the tech reporter is going to be massively different than the merchandising or the marketing reporter or the TV reporter if your widget ever happens to blow up. Do you have positioning? to create your key call point for every single reporter out there. And more importantly, can you change it on the fly? In other words, why should the business reporter call you either to feature your company or just as beneficial to use you as a credible expert in the industry? Why you and not someone else? Well, because hopefully you have given them the perfect call point for what they are covering and for who they are. Because I'll tell you this, if you give a consumer reporter financial data only, they're not going to be happy. If you give the financial reporter consumer data only, they're not going to be happening. Positioning highlights your differences. So again, I'll ask those questions. Can you change your call point on demand? Is your entire company on the same page? What happens if you say something and they randomly happen to talk to someone who's not allowed to talk to the press and he says something entirely different? You have a plan for that? What happens when things change? What happens when there is a crisis and one of your widgets catches fire? Something like that. Do you have those plans? You have to know how to create them. You have to make sure that you are completely confident with your call point, regardless of who might be calling you at that moment in time, every single time. Here's your fourth tip. This is probably my most favorite one because so few people do this. And the, le the, the least number of people who do this, the easier it is for you to do it. Here it is. Be brilliant at the basics. I had a professor who told me that once. He said, be brilliant at the basics. And no matter how crazy everything else gets, you'll do fine. He's really right. I hope he's still alive. He was an awesome professor at Boston University. Here's the thing. 99% of all media pitches die before they're even fully read by the reporter. It's so true. 
it is so easy to write a good pitch, yet so few people do it. Most reporters have their finger on the delete key, ready to delete the email before they've read three lines. That's not my making up a stat. I've interviewed a lot of reporters back when I was running Harrow, and the numbers have only gotten worse. So what are the basics there? What do I mean? Well, accessibility is a given, right? You've written a great press release, okay? You've gotten all the points. You have your key call point. It's specific to that reporter. The pitch is on point. Well, they call you back. What if they can't get you? What if it goes to voicemail? Are they going to leave a message? Maybe. Wouldn't it be easier if you answered the phone? If they do leave a message and you get it, 6 p.m. on a Friday night, should you still respond? I would. By Monday, that is 24, 48, 72 hours of news cycle away from when the reporter was interested in your story. Are they still there? I can't tell you if they are. You have to know. I've called reporters back at 2 in the morning because they said it's urgent. Call when you get in. You know what happened? I got the story. Are your facts up to date? God help you if you send out the latest information to a reporter and you send them the wrong facts. Because if they go to print with that, it doesn't matter that you screwed up. You will be blacklisted from ever pitching that reporter again because they can't trust you. Without the basics, nothing else matters. Are your stats together? Again, are you pitching the right person within the outlet? Imagine there are two financial reporters, one of whom's covered your industry before, and you pitch the other one and he bites. 50% says you're not getting pitched. You're not going to get a pitch to that right reporter ever again. They will walk away. Without the basics, nothing else matters. And that comes to the final point is what you're pitching, exactly what they cover. Are they there to the point where they will give you their undivided attention because you're giving them exactly what they need and want? I hope you are. It's kind of important that you do. So we're at point five. Point five is pretty interesting because we live in a world that's so fast paced and so on point with these 24 hour news cycles and constant deadlines, which mean no deadlines. It's pretty easy to pitch without having done as much homework as you're supposed to. You know what the problem there is? If you're not doing your homework, you don't know enough about the reporter. If this is your first time sending a pitch to a reporter, whether it's through Harrow or through your own research, how much do you know about them? How much do you really, really, really know about your reporter? We live in a time where information has never been easier to get. We also live in a time where we are incredibly lax to do that information, to get the, to do that homework and to get that information. What do I mean by that? Well, a reporter by nature is a public figure. Their stories are out there, whether they're behind a paywall or available on Google for free. Their stories are out there. Are you doing enough homework? If you have not read at least six of the reporter's previous stories before you're pitching them for the first time, you're making a mistake. Here's why. Let's say the reporter just started at a new beat and they're right up your alley at a new publication. Well, where'd they work before? Don't assume they're a blank slate. They already are set in their ways about how they like to report, about how they like to get information, about what buzzwords they use. Can you get a handle on that information? Can you look it up? You know all the secret places to find all this stuff, right? Where did the reporter work before their current gig? Can you peruse those stories? What are their target words? What are target words? Well, where are these reporters going to write? When they go to write their stories, what are the words they're constantly coming back to using? Start researching that. You'll be amazed that reporters have, each reporter, each individual reporter has their own language. They talk specifically about specific words they always come back to. If you can incorporate those words into your pitch, don't you think you have a better shot? So here's another question. When did they last cover you? Or maybe they never did. Well, if they never covered you, when was the last time they covered your competitors? Guess what? If you're pitching a reporter on a story about your industry, including you, and two weeks ago they covered that industry, not meaning, not featuring you, guess what they're not going to do? They're not going to cover you. It's going to go into the trash. Reporters on average are getting 250 pitches a day. And you know what? That number is probably out of date. It's about four months old. It's probably higher than that now. Think about every publicist, every junior administrative publicist, every entry-level publicist, every private publicist, every person who has access to the media list, all pitching the same reporters, all to get that information out there. That's a lot of data. How do you stand out from it? Doing your homework will help you come out on top. 
When I tell you that this isn't rocket science, I cannot stress that enough. This is not rocket science. But here's the thing. Most people don't do their homework. That works tremendously in your favor. If you go through the basics and you get some of this information that I'm telling you here, just right there, you're ahead of the game by a factor of two. You obviously want to be ahead of the game by a factor of ten, but hey, two is better than zero. Always do your homework. So remember I told you I was going to give you one extra free tip? Okay, here it is. Guess what? Your job is not to get press for yourself. Your job is not to get press for your company. Your job is not to get press for your clients. <laughs> your job isn't to get press. I mean, it sounds like it is, sure. I'm, I'm a publicist. I work in public relations. My job is to get media. It's not. Your job, simply put, is to help a reporter do their job. If you can help a reporter do their job, Okay, this reporter who's doing 10 times more with five times less, this reporter who doesn't have the time to go find 50 sources, this reporter who doesn't have the time to outline the themes of a story, you help this reporter do their job, guess what's going to happen? They're going to do your job for you. They are going to think of you when they need a source. They're going to think of you when they need a quote. They're going to think of you when they need a client that's profiled. They're going to think of you when they're on deadline and they're going to call you first because they know they can trust you. You help them do your jobs and victory is yours. Help them do the job they have to do in the time they have to do it. Can you write a pitch that's short enough to get them to ask for more? Then give them that help when they need it. God help you if you ask them, if, you, if they call you and say, hey, we're interested and you don't have the information to give them. Can you over deliver? Can you anticipate the question a reporter is going to ask and have the answers along with additional info on hand and ready to go? Well, if you've done your homework on the reporter, which was tip five, you will be able to do that. If you're brilliant at the basics, you'll be able to do that. If your numbers are sharp, if you've owned your positioning, and if you know your goal. Your job is not to get press. Your job is to help a reporter do that, do their job. Do that, and the reporter will give you all the press you could ever conceivably want. The illusion that everyone has about PR is that obtaining media is easy. The truth is that by default, it's not easy, but it can be. I have proven, whether through Harrow or through the system that I built, that obtaining press on your own can not only be easy, but it doesn't have to take up your entire day. It doesn't have to be frustrating. And you don't have to fail anywhere near as much as you're failing. You have an opportunity to win the public relations wars. The question is, how? Well, you now have two paths. You can be like everyone else and send those same off-topic pitches. You can think about the information I gave you, then not do it. Or you could be slightly better. The bar is low. Nice thing about a bar being low, you can jump over it pretty easily. Even if you have arthritis in both knees and you haven't worked out in six months, it's pretty easy to jump over a very low bar. So I ask you this, do you want to jump over that very low bar and get the pitches to the reporters and get the press that you're desperately craving? Okay, so let me ask you a question. If you followed what I showed you, right, in step one, if you remember step one, that was a while back, right? In step one, I talked all about knowing your goal, right? That led to step two, which was the concept of owning your positioning. That, of course, led you to step three, which is knowing your key call point. Step four, being brilliant at the basics. Step five, doing your homework. And then the bonus step, which is your job and what it actually is. Do you think you'd be successful? Do you think you'd be able to get your own media coverage and truly grow your business? If it's okay with you, I want to spend the next few minutes going over the special offer I have that will help you learn each of these steps and implement them. Here's what you're going to get. In week one, we're going to talk all about the foundations of press. Powerful principles about getting your press are at the core of this lesson, and this lesson alone will set you light years ahead of all of your peers. In week two, we'll go over what opportunities are best for you and your business so you stop wasting time chasing ones that don't matter and focus your energy on the opportunities where you'll get the biggest return on your time. 
In week three, we're going to create professional press kit for you. We're going to talk about creating the perfect media-friendly bio for your press kit so you're always seen as an expert, whether it's for you or your business. In week four, we're going to discuss everything you need to do to create, cultivate, nurture, and grow your media relationships without the annoying contact, without bothering them, without wasting reporters' time, and most certainly without getting blacklisted. By week five, you'll be ready to perfect the pitch so that your pitches to reporters no longer get deleted by overwhelmed and hurried reporters, but get read. In week six, we're going to talk about creating a media strategy so you're ready to put it all together and start getting media opportunities. Someone named Elaine took this class a few months ago. She had been working with a pro bono client trying to get them media in California. She took the class. She has a full story coming out, a weekend story that a reporter has been working on for three weeks. A weekend story usually means multiple pages, pictures, backgrounds. That press alone is worth upwards of $50,000 to her pro bono client. When you're a pro bono client, that usually means your nonprofit, 50 grand worth of press on the first pitch alone. Forget about all the other media outlets that are going to tack onto the story and give her more. She's very, very happy right now. Now, here's the thing. You might be thinking that you're not ready to start this course. Maybe you're just a small business. Maybe you don't have a product ready. But when you think about it, that's a great time to build out your press strategy so you accelerate your growth. So let me ask you this. What would it be worth to get more media for your business? What is it costing you to not get media coverage and stay stuck where you are? Your choices are pretty much this. Choice one, do nothing with the information you learned in the past 45 minutes and nothing will change. Choice two, take what I've given you and try to do it yourself. That's it's fair, right? This was a free webinar. Go for it. Choice three, sign up for my course and truly become the master of your own media. If you offer choice three, know that you'll be in a tight-knit community of entrepreneurs and you'll get my support as you go. Below this video is all the information you need to sign up. And if you're ready, I invite you to take action and join the other amazing entrepreneurs who are also and already getting results and getting media coverage. As always, feel free to reach out to me on social media, at Peter Shankman on all the socials, or just send me an email. I'm happy to help any way I can. And most importantly, thanks. Thanks for taking time to listen. I hope this was useful.